All right, guys, what's going on today? We had the absolute dream push here. Two Lumber Loons in a row, some RG Bait, Hoggy Q, all sorts of stuff. I got some Graveyard from yesterday as well. So I have a lot of matches to go over, some really hard matchups. And, yeah, I did get the Skeleton Grill maxed out. As you can see, I'm 3,000 gold away, under 3,000 gold away from getting either the Skarmy or... Um, log leveled up i will need all 20 legendaries still for the princess i think i got oh wait i will actually get the <laughs> book of cards there it's realized from the past royale so once i get that i'll have the princess maxed out too once i get enough gold and let me see right here do i have enough star points how many do i have oh i do have twenty thousand now so i can get my whole thing star pointed maxed out so there we go um, yes, let's hop in here to the first match I'm probably going to show. Let's see here. I would say the first or the most recent um, Lumber Loon was a bit easier since he had really nothing to reset my Inferno Tower, whereas the second match there, um, he had Hog for more pressure so he could outcycle my Inferno Tower. He had Log for my Skarmy, and he had Bats to distract my Inferno Tower. That's, that, that is a much harder matchup. Lumber Loon. Always really annoying, but this one right here is definitely um, a harder match. Yeah, so right here, I don't really have a good starting hand. Really, you don't want to be playing Skeleton Barrel first play, but if you are at 10 Elixir, opponent's not doing anything, I would say it's like a fair enough play to just go um, Skeleton Barrel right there. It's usually going to not be the best value. You could get lucky and have them have really nothing to counter it. But yeah, it's only three elixir. But still really easily counterable just by itself as a first play. And yeah, so we see as bats, I'm thinking right now, we see the lumber loon. See that balloon getting all raged up. I see the bats. See the executioner for my skeleton barrel, and it's not looking good. Had to waste a goblin barrel right there to counter the hog. Thankfully, he didn't have like arrows or anything to counter that or freeze. I was really concerned about freeze at this point since he had a hog and balloons. So I thought freeze would maybe synergize really well with that. And yeah, he did have. I think the dark prince is a bit unnecessary in his deck. I think if he replaced that dark prince with a uh, probably freeze, he would have a much better and more toxic deck. But thankfully. He chose not to do that. Because, yeah, the Lumberjack really kind of has a lot of the same function as a Dark Prince. And he already has the splash of the Executioner. He doesn't really need it that much, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, still going to be <laughs> insanely annoying um, deck for us to deal with. Lumberjack's going to get a lot of damage right there. We pretty much just had to log it. We're going to go with the Dark Goblin opposite lane. But I've really realized, and actually, well, I already like knew this, but I've actually started practicing this and using it a lot more um, during games, is realizing when to go opposite lane. So in a situation like this, um, this guy right now, he has a Dark Prince already on that side. We don't want to be going into that left lane. We don't want to be going, like right there is not the best example, but like right now, definitely want to be playing that Skeleton Barrel. Um, where there's just like no air counters or something. So since you have the executioner down over there, we're going with the skeleton mirror on the left side. We already have more damage over there as well. Uh, we're gonna have to tank a bit of damage there from the executioner because I was trying to go more on offense, but he actually was uh going pretty good on the defense there. So I don't think I was really doing it right now, but just watch out for those better um lane switching opportunities i'll have here at least at some point in this match um <clears throat> so yeah both towers i have fairly low on his end i am at a slight damage advantage since he only has about 18 1800 on my tower and i have 1700 on his this hog right right here i had no elixir for that inferno tower that skeleton it's gonna distract my knight so the hog rider is getting all sorts of damage all raged up as well it's super annoying to deal with, especially since he has that log for my Skarmy. And um, I think one of his biggest mistakes here is he was not playing his balloon that much. If he only knew, 
if he only knew how bad that uh, lumber loon push would be for me, especially after he just went with the hog rider. Yeah, that would be terrible for me. But yeah, we are able to go in there with a skeleton barrel. He misplays a log, and we get the win. Um, so next up here, this hog one. I would show this because I completely completely was out playing him, but it was a disconnect at the end. Like, I had his tower halfway down. He had barely touched mine. Um, and then he, like, disconnected or something. I doubt he gave up. So I'm not going to show that one. Um, I will show probably this giant skeleton one right now. Giant skeleton RG bait as well as the prince bait. Because, I mean, those are... I mean, this one's a lot less known, but it is... A legitimate deck it's not just something this dude made up so you will see this every once in a while unfortunate here that i went with the goblin bear on the back when he already had played his princess in the back so it was all gonna get splashed and i figured his log bait if i really wanted to log that anyway and i still have skarmy for the goblin barrel skarmy is one of the best goblin barrel counters out there for sure so a lot of the times um classic bait matchups are like completely my matchup since i have the skarmy and the log for all of their bait and they'll only have the log for mine um but matchups like these where he's got the skarmy as well and the log as well um and the dark goblin and all that it's a lot more even i'd say i've hardly ever played um this type of deck be played against this type of deck before um but yeah i definitely know it is legitimate when he plays a scar me down last second i was gonna go with a little sneaky dark goblin to counter his princess and look at that dark goblin all those bats were back there countering the goblins from my barrel the dark goblin sneaks on tower gets just a load of damage right there and that's already looking like the game is ours to lose right now but we, I'm pretty sure we only know he had giant skeletons. So I was thinking this is just some random off-meta deck. But because I had not seen the RG yet, I wasn't really even thinking about this one. Uh, this variation of log bait. Uh, and yeah, so this... Um, yeah, really looking like it's in our favor right now. We're going to get some mad princess value right there. Takes out the dark goblin and hits the tower twice. So everything is going our way. Uh, unfortunately, the Dark Goblin is going to be one step, one tile um, ahead there. Just going to go with the log on that princess. <clears throat> and unfortunate timing there. Um, the Stab Goblins are going to get some damage, and the Spear Goblins are going to pretty much take out that whole skeleton beard. I'll make it pop early. And right here, good Dark Goblin by me, at least making that Inferno Tower survive long enough to... I'm pretty sure that yeah, it completely stops the RG right there. First time he had played that all game. So I was pretty shocked when I saw that. And again, just that unlucky timing right there with our goblin, with his goblin game being in cycle the exact time as I'm playing my skeleton barrel. Um, and then I think at this point he might have just given up or something because this is definitely not a disconnect. He wasted three elixir and we were already up by so much and he just kind of gave up right here. Um. <clears throat> All right, we're back here. We're gonna go into the next match, which is gonna be this really horribly annoying graveyard poison recruits flying machine. This is just worst possible match. But I can't even dream about this recruits. Um, the re recruits hog stack and a graveyard are probably some of the worst matchups. For my deck, and then this is like a hybrid deck of them both. I'm not sure what this guy was going for here, but certainly would seem like a snipe or something if I was in a tournament, but just horrible luck on our part. He is level 14. He has a couple level 13 cards. I think Poison and Bar Barrel, but that's not going to matter, um, especially considering we have three or four underleveled cards as well. So I'm already seeing the Flying Machine. I'm already assuming um, this is going to be that recruits hogs deck. i thought the knight was going to get in front there of course not of course not the flying machine is going to get four or five hits there might have only been three i think actually but um this bar barrel's out of cycle at least we're going to get quite a good bit of goblin barrel chip damage i think this might actually be 
might actually be one of the reasons why this wasn't um, an impossible match is because we at least had the potential to outcycle his bar barrel because if it was a classic graveyard poison or a classic recurs hogs uh, deck he'd have a lot easier of a time cycling through but since he had the graveyard and that uh, the recruits there and the cannon card and all that is going to make it a bit heavier of a deck and easier for us to get some damage but still once it hits double looks through those graveyard poisons are going to be close to impossible to stop because i mean if you look at my cards i got skarmy that's gonna get poisoned in one tick knight's not fast enough to hit all the skeletons log's not enough to deal with all of it and dark album's not really fast enough so it's like i gotta like make a bunch of on the fly combinations of cards to counter those graveyard skeletons coming up uh, so you'll see what i do there in a matter of time here just hitting double looks so right now we see the recruits and yeah, he had not played either recruits or graveyard this whole time yeah he's gonna go with a poison right there though gonna log on that side and we do have um more damage taken on that right side so we're gonna kite the knight um kite him over there one of those recruits to get a bit of damage that was uh not intended but it's <laughs> trying to kite all those over and we are yeah that log is gonna be able to counter the um first like a lifespan health on the cannon card there whatever we call the first stage of it where it's rolling so that th thankfully is not going to get onto our tower and get any damage there because that's going to be i think what happened later on uh, you might see that cannon card gets quite a bit of damage pretty quickly gonna protect the princess right there i think oh maybe not no the flying machine's still connected on the night i mean that's a bit of luck on our part but i mean since that uh, the flying machine somehow never shut onto my princess, even though the knight was really far away there. It looked like it was in a start targeting the princess. So right here, I see um, the tower on our um, right hand side is only 2018. I thought I could tank that. Oh no. Oh no, I could not. I did not realize just how much damage that max cannon card would be doing, and the flying machine gets a hit right there. So, yeah, never leave a cannon card ignored even like no matter how much health you have on the tower so i pretty much had to go in with a um borderline desperation barrel right there he doesn't go with the graveyard on the right hand side not the left hand side for some reason and then he has no more bar barrel we're gonna take the win right there nearly choked that one but still that was again only one bad play right there because this one i know is a really difficult match graveyard poison i would say it's the hardest counter to my deck or at least out of the decks that i play on mid ladder that's the one i struggle against the most this hoggy q and um that um uh, lumber loon and then the recruits hogs deck is like the lumber loon and recruits hogs they're definitely winnable it's just really annoying to face them same with like golem and stuff but like the i would say hoggy q and this deck right here or any variation of graveyard poison are the actual like hard counters all right so right here i'm gonna get some nice night damage on that um right hand side if you saw that and of course we see this graveyard um see that he's in a damage advantage not a good situation at all he's got barb barrel as well i'm pretty sure he hit all those goblins that he did i was expecting him to have tornado i forget if he does um, actually have tornado or not so i knew he had ice wizard and then he has baby dragon there as well so i was for sure thinking he had tornado so that's why i was going off to the side um with the goblin barrels like that so right here i think one of the best um things you can do and of course this princess was one tile ahead gonna get the baby dragon on it so really unfortunate there one of the best things you can do against graveyard poison is put princesses in the back um on your healthier tower so if they have to poison it that's spinning four elixir for three and it's only damaging the tower um with less damage on it and graveyard players only want to go for the one tower game because if the king tower is activated they're gonna have a much harder time oh we did have tornado but he doesn't um never mind so we actually did have tornado um yeah they're gonna have 
a much harder time getting the second tower down if the king tower is activated obviously there since it's helping out uh so yeah if they're getting if they're having to poison on your healthier tower that is really counterproductive for them especially since it's that um positive elixir trade for you he's had to poison that princess and dark obviously get a pretty good tornado there doesn't collect it all the skeletons he wasn't able to because he's also trying to tornado so my other stuff there, we're going to go for the Juke Barrel in the back. He misses one Goblin. Those little things like that puts us down. It puts him down to 2,500 on that right-hand side. And he's only got ours down to 2,300 still. Double Luxor Time, great for Graveyard, not great for us. So it's really looking like we're going to need some really great stuff to happen for us to win he's gonna have a poison on our weak tower so not ideal at all there again so right here is what i was talking about earlier in the video the optimal time for lane switching he has um that tower down weak on our right side and he has supporting units lined up behind his right side tower so we got it for sure no matter even if that tower on the left hand side was full hp you still need to switch there go with the skeleton barrel go with the goblin barrel down there and it prevents him from going in um, with the graveyard. So now all of a sudden, because we decided to switch lanes there, and he's still having diverted attention to that right-hand side because there's not really a um, good reason for him to switch to the left-hand side since he has so much more damage on that side, on our right side, that is. Um, yeah, we've already got his left side tower down to 1,200. Dark Goblin sneaks in, gets two shots right there. Bringing that down to 875. He's going to catch the Juke Barrel and get that Ice Wizard down. That If that Ice Wizard was the pre-buff one, that would have been about game over right there. But, of course, the Ice Wizard can now land and one-shot all those skeletons. He's going to go with a Graveyard Poison right there. This is pretty much his last chance to get damage. We get a really good log right there. The Goblins are not going to be one ticked or two ticks. It's like a three tick on the Poison. So now we know we have to get down um, either Dark Goblin, Skeleton Barrel, and Goblin Barrel before he gets a Poison down. He should have put that Poison down right now. He might have been able to win, um, but he was too focused on defense. I don't know. I'm, if he poisoned early, he might have not having, had enough Elixir to defend any of that stuff, but... All right, back to another Graveyard Poison match here. Um, that last one went down to the wire. I forget if this one did or not as well. This guy's only level 13, but he's going to go with a Graveyard right off the bat right here. He's going to Tornado my Skeletons, I'm pretty sure. And we are going to get a good log, but still, even with him not making the best play, going way overly aggressive, he's still going to have a 400 damage lead on us. And, yeah, it's not even because of the tower HP difference because he has the same tower HP as I do. So, yeah, again, we're going to go with the princess always on the um, strong uh, tower with more HP. So he has to go for damage in the lane. He doesn't really want to. So yeah, right here, I forget if we're going to go with a barrel, right or left, doesn't really matter. I think, yeah, we're going to support the knight, go with it there, but he is going to have the barrel in hand. Uh, probably should have gone with a barrel on the safe spot or something, but... Yeah, so still, I think that bar barrel is actually going to, yeah, take out the dark goblin. There's some things, just like last game, not looking good right away. Um... Because, yeah, once again, it's one of the hardest matchups, especially if they're being aggressive right away for a log bait player to deal with, especially classic log bait. Um, or I, I don't know, this one might actually be harder since I have Skarmy rather than Goblin Gang, because Goblin Gang can survive a few ticks of poison. Skarmy going to get tornadoed, insta-killed, and poisoned, insta-killed. So he's going to get a decent bar barrel right there, but I, I knew he was going to bar barrel, so I still went with a Dark Goblin. Um, behind it because i knew the dark album was still gonna get like three or four hits right there which is exactly what i wanted so now we're gonna be in a about 100 damage advantage he's gonna go with tombstone right there so i see what he's doing he's trying to build up a push on the right hand side he kind of splits it over to the um left hand side to counter the princess but yeah he's definitely got a lot more units stacked up on the right hand side so we're not going to be wanting to go in, on offense in that lane 
Uh, but yeah, we went with the skeleton barrel right there. Pretty good skeleton barrel to distract the baby dragon. But yeah, that graveyard was just uh, kind of unanswerable for me. Didn't really have any thing in hand besides like a log to really fully counter that or anything. So we had to settle for taking a good bit of damage right there. We're still in the lead by a little bit. He's got that king tower activated. Um, yeah, we're going to go with a log right there. Still not going to take out that second tombstone, so not the best log, but we do have another Dark Goblin on the board right now. It's going to be distracting those skeletons, and the Ice Wizard's going to hit it, so a couple of unfortunate things right there. And the Barbarrel connects, so should be going with the Princess yep, there on the left-hand side, since there's more HP in that tower. He has to go with the Poison exactly what I wanted right there. Um, so yeah, again, they're wanting to go for that one tower game. Graveyard players always want to go for that one tower game, unless maybe they're a graveyard freeze player. That's a different story. And there we go. We go in a safe spot for the tornado. And if he tornadoes trying to activate King Tower or just bring him to King Tower since it's already activated, he tornadoed them. They're stabbing the tower while they're getting tornadoed, and that's down, um, I think 300 or 400 more damage right there. Not the best log right there again on the tombstone. Still gonna have to take out those skeletons with the knight. And, yeah, Princess, I mean, I wanted to take out that baby dragon for sure, but he might get some decent poison value here. The towers were about equal anyway. I might have lost track because we were doing a good job earlier of spreading out that damage. He's going with a pretty good tornado there, but doesn't quite kill the, all the skeletons. Tower's still locked onto the night, and the goblin's going to get uh, two or three stabs right there. A single goblin that we got into the tower. Um... From playing the barrel on the side. He's in a poison up front, not killing all those skeletons. The Skarmy is going to get a lot of damage right there. Meanwhile, his baby dragon is actually going to get a lot of damage on the left hand side. So that tower is the weak one. He, but he still has all those supporting units left on the right. So he's going to be going in with the graveyard on the right side. Log again there, cleaning up everything pretty well. He has his tombstones constantly built up for our skeleton barrels. Um, but right here, he doesn't have any bar barrel in cycles. So we're going to go with this. Uh, Goblin Barrel. Must have not realized that because I went with it in a spot where the Tornado can counter pretty well. And yeah, we have one second left right there and just barely, just barely. So this one also went down the wire. Glad I showed it. 55 HP right there. This is pretty much what all your graveyard wins are going to look like unless it's just a terrible player. But no, both those both those graveyard, rather, graveyard poison uh, matches that I showed, players were not playing um, bad at all. Or at least noticeably. I think that's probably going to be it for today. I showed a lot of really hard matchups. And yeah, 6,400 trophies right now. Probably going to push for 6,600. I'll make a video if I get to there. If not, I'll regroup and have some more max cards for next season and hopefully get to 6,600 then. So that's it for today's video and make sure to hit the like button if you did learn anything subscribe if you're new here and i'll be seeing you next time